So what is the big new feature in SoundWorks version 1.16? It's called VoiceOver. You can see it in the SoundWorks launcher window. And this feature allows you to change the voice in your existing video or audio, um, translate and process if needed from one language to another, change the language while keeping the pace, and well, basically everything about your video. Uh, we are using it to translate training videos into other languages or to narrate videos at your own pace maybe not as quickly as needed maybe not as good as needed so for example as i'm doing right here right now uh, it's a live voice it's not robotic it's without script and just speaking my mind and you obviously don't like it because it's slow because uh, you prefer to get all the information in shortest time period as possible so after i record this video what i will do i will use this voiceover feature and will create versions in different other languages and probably another version in english which, as you will see, will contain significantly better content in terms of the voice and in terms of the text, because we'll be able to change the text, because we'll be able to rephrase things if needed, uh, to make it more professional, to make it uh, simpler. If I will delve into some technicalities, maybe I will want to remove them and instead try to explain them uh, to non-tech guys, uh, uh, so you get the idea. So before we go to voiceover, we'll cover another thing, another thing that's added in 116, which is uh, very much linked to voiceover. As you know, in SoundWorks, you can, let's take a look at the main window, you can um, narrate your materials, you can create a voice from text, it's a technology called text-to-speech, you are selecting the language, you're selecting the voice, you're typing your text, you're clicking the process button, and you're getting your mp3 file with the voice, but you don't care about the rest, and it works perfectly for corporate users who don't really need all this API nonsense, they don't need to create uh, APIs, they just want a program that would work. Um, and while it works for corporate customers, it absolutely doesn't fit the uh, normal uh, end users. So in VoiceOver, what we do, we allow you to save your own API keys. and try not to laugh. Let's go to that manager. And as you can see, currently you can save one, two, three, four, five, six different API keys, but that's not the limit because um, we will have to add another probably four different providers which require API keys. So we had to make it as easy for you as possible. So here is the editor, which allows you to save API keys. So let me start from that and explain how it works and why it works the way it works. As you can see, there is only one input box into which you can type uh, something, mm -hmm. your API keys, uh, your API key. It doesn't um, display, you can also paste something from your clipboard whatever there was it was inserted and what's interesting here uh, the clipboard at that moment was erased why it was done this way because if you have multiple users for example your colleagues at work and they will be using the corporate api keys you don't want 
people to actually get these API keys. You want them to use them, but you don't want them to be able to extract that API key. So that's why that's the way it is. You can insert it using a remote um, a remote desktop session if you want. Just copy paste here and if you will use this paste uh, link you will be sure that a user will not be able to paste it somewhere else in the uh, notepad or something. Now once the text is here if you will click the save button, uh, well, uh, it's, it's a button that looks like a link. If you will click this uh, save link, it will save the value from the input box to whatever is uh, that line um, where you see the save link. So in this case, it will be AWS key, AWS secret, region, and so on. You don't see the full API key here, only first four characters and the last four characters, so whatever is in between, you don't see it and you are not able to retrieve it. Um, again, it was done just to make uh, saving your API keys secure. Behind the scenes, it's encrypted, it's saved in user registry, so other users will not have access to it. If these values will be copied to another machine, they will not work. And uh, I would say it's relatively secure. It's quite secure. I don't think that your key will ever be compromised. Most values here are encrypted, but the ones like region are not because they are not sensitive. If you are working on your machine and you don't know how to get the API key for this service, you just click the button Manage Your Keys Online and it will navigate your browser to the page where you can create your key. At this moment, Soundworks doesn't have any instruction about how to acquire that key, uh, which is probably a problem with services like Azure, this one, because while it's very simple to get your API key from OpenAI or Anthropic or DeepL or 11 Labs, in Azure it's quite a story, in AWS it's a bit simpler. But still, it, it requires some knowledge and if you are going to do it for the first time, well, get some tolerance for it. However, some of these keys are just not needed. For example, Azure is used, as you can see in this tip, um, only for language translation. And there is another language translation, which is DeepL. DeepL is marginally better than Azure. Um, for some languages, significantly better, but usually I prefer to use DeepL. Also, DeepL is the one that allows you to generate free key. Um, if I remember right, about 100,000 characters per month or something like that. Anyway, if you will click Manage Your Keys Online, uh, you will see what's their current, uh, what are the current rules in terms of services. What you will need for uh, that new feature to work, you will need AWS probably unless you have a free Celero text-to-speech engine, which you can install from options as well. Uh, so I would recommend AWS because uh, Celero only works for English and Russian, I think. Um, it doesn't have voices for other languages. AWS has um, voices for at least 13 languages, maybe more. Now, uh, DeepL for translation, OpenAI for uh, uh, any AI-related stuff. For example, if you need to rewrite your text, make it more creative, make it uh, simpler, etc., you will need OpenAI key. Cloud, Anthropic Cloud is 
basically the same as uh, ChatGPT. Uh, some people prefer it, some people don't like it. Either way, you can click manage your keys online, get your key, and you will have an option. 11 laps at this moment, at the moment of recording this video, it's just an option to save your key. We are not using their voices. That's upcoming feature, probably will be released in a week or two. Uh, since I, men I mentioned Celera, here in options, you have Celera tab. There is a link install Celera and it will be sort of wizard, which will allow you to install it on your machine. I would highly recommend to do it if you have NVIDIA video card, um, because in that case it will work significantly faster. Also, I would highly recommend to install Whisper, OpenAI Whisper, which allows you to transcribe your media files into text. Again, it requires um, NVIDIA uh, RTX card, which you can, if you don't know if you have it, for example, if you have a laptop and you don't know if it's NVIDIA RTX, you can click here. Uh, it will tell you that you do have NVIDIA RTX, and in that case, well, happy days, uh, you'll be uh, able to run it much quicker. You can install Whisper even if you don't have RTX card, but in that case, the difference will be drastic um, to transcribe a file will take probably 10 times longer. Um, so instead of spending five minutes, you will spend 40 minutes or something like that. So back to the new feature. You just double click the voiceover and you see this new window. Um, if you are watching this much later than this video was recorded, then you will see that the window changed because currently we only support Celera as the free local engine because we don't have other free local engines and we support AWS. We don't support all Soundworks voices, which means a few additional APIs um, because we don't want to use um, uh, Soundworks API in this particular feature. We want you to have direct control over what you're doing, which means that we will add a few more providers and uh, they will be placed somewhere here. Uh, definitely there will be level labs, though it's very expensive, but uh, at least it provides you with the best choices in terms of voices. It, uh, it gives you really good quality. So what do we see here? First, it starts with a subtitle file. So instead of selecting audio or video file, you are selecting the subtitle in SRT format. Why subtitle? Why not the media file? Because first of all, you can create the SRT files here in Soundworks and we just want to keep it simpler. Sometimes you already have the subtitle. Uh, if you don't, then here is the link, create from video and audio file. If you are working with the video from YouTube, then in a form which downloads video from YouTube, there is an option, save the subtitle, and you can select the format and language. So if, it, if the video is in English, just say that you want English subtitles in SRT format and you will get it. Now, uh, let's try it with one video. I have just downloaded one video from, the, uh, from YouTube, but I didn't download the subtitles, even though I could. Now, what to do if I have a video, but I don't have subtitles? In that case, I'm clicking here and we are getting into transcribe file window which only works if you have Whisper installed. That's absolutely the best um, speech-to-text engine, which is free from OpenAI, which works on your computer, it doesn't send anything anywhere, uh, which works significantly better than online version, simply because the best mode uh, is only available offline. What you get online is normal at best. Uh, and here we will select my video file. 
uh, which is just a random uh, video from YouTube. I know that it's in English. If it wouldn't be in English, I would probably translate it to English. As you can see, it can only be processed on this machine, because I didn't set up additional machine. What it is, we will speak another time about it. And I want it to save all possible formats into the same directory. Now, what does it mean? It means that not only text and SRT, but every other format will be written there. Why that? Because I want text and I want SRT. The only option to do that is to say all. Um, if you don't have video card, the uh, uh, NVIDIA video card, then you can say force CPU mode. In my case, I will not do that. So I'll just click process file. I assume the video is about 30 minutes long, so it probably will take um, five minutes to create subtitles on my machine. And as, as we can see, it's quite quick. I will save your time. I will just pause the video until it will finish. But as you can see, the text um, is recognized quite well. And in the end, we will have the subtitle file that we need. And here we are. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more. All right, so now we have this SRT file. We can just close this and select it. Once it's selected, we can proceed with next steps. First, we need to select the source language. If we don't know the source language or just want to make it quicker, here is the detect link. And we see that it's in English. Now, the target language is, uh, it decides whether we want to translate it or we just want to revoice it. So, for example, with this particular video that I'm recording at the moment, um, probably I don't want you to hear my accent, pronunciation, etc., etc. Maybe you hate it. Uh, who knows it? Maybe you love it. Um, but if I want to make this video more professional, I will probably keep the target language as English and choose the voice which suits me. Now, regarding voices, and why wouldn't I do that at the moment with my video, is because it supports two engines. One is Celera, which is free, which means um, below average quality, at least for English, and AWS, which supports many languages, but regarding the quality, it is so-so, mm, relatively good, depends on the language. And uh, the fact is, you don't know. And that's why you have the option here to listen to sample. So if we click here. Hello, how are you? It says, hello, how are you? For each language that you will choose. Hello, how are you? And as you can see, each language is different uh, in terms of how quickly it speaks and whether it supports intonations and all this stuff, emotions. Hello, how are you? That's very old school. 
And for Cilero, we could say that most of them are high school, uh, old school. Hello, how are you? This one is good enough. Hello, how are you? That's suitable, possible. So um, we will use language from AWS. Now AWS costs money. It goes from your API key. So you will see how much was used. Uh, if you want only free uh, local engines, then you just deselect AWS. And all languages here are free ones. So for the sake of this demo, we will select our, let's say this language. Uh, sorry, voice. Hello, how are you? Uh, so the end result will be of quite low quality, um, but we only need to show how it works, right? Uh, we don't want to create um, a full 30 minutes video. We just want to test how it works. And that's why here we have option process first minutes only with value of two. So the end result will be just two minutes long. AI and review. What does it mean? Uh, what does it mean? You can select the first option, have faith in full automation, just do it quickly, which means that it will just go through it. Or you can review each portion of original text and then you will see the rewrite dialog with an option to rewrite or translate or just edit a portion of the source text. So the original text of the uh, of the source video. Uh, for example, if you made some errors, for example, instead of voice, I sometimes say language, even though it's written here that it's voice, but I can say several hundred language. I don't know why. So if I want to change it, I will open the SRT file and edit it, or I can edit it um, here during the review of the original text. A resulting text, well, that's, that's the text that will go into text-to-speech engine. Uh, if you are using translation, then you will be able to review the translation. If you are a native speaker for any language, uh, language into which you translate, that will help. Um, with DeepL, usually the quality is quite good. It's passable. Uh, we went through numerous tests with native speakers in uh, German, in Russian, and I think Spanish. And they all said that it's good enough. Uh, while Azure is giving you results that passable, but as they are saying, we usually don't speak like that. With DeepL, it's a bit more natural, though there are some quirks. So none of them is ideal. And that's why you would probably like to review everything. And it's more fun, unless your video is three hours long. Now, what you will be reviewing, you will be reviewing chunks of text. It's not the full text of the of the uh, video or audio that uh, you're voicing, but chunks. And chunk is usually within 700 something uh, characters. Um, why is that? Because you need to ensure, first of all, that well, ensure the correctness. That's one thing, ensure the quality. But second, um, we want to make sure that whatever you are saying in the original video will only appear in the end video at the right time. And that means we should use chunks of text and maybe fill with silence in between them. So if you're saying something at fifth minute, the translation or the new voice should appear at fifth minute. Now, advanced 
advanced tab is for uh, the logical final part so if you want to create a new video with new audio then you can select the source video here it will not be changed it will not be amended the new video will be created uh, but with a new audio track let's select the original video uh, just to see how it works so I selected the file and I checked the attach new audio track to video will be saved as new video file and this option uh, means that we will try to create new video file now there are two options um, how the new audio track will be added first is replacing the original track so for example if you're translating from English to French you want French version you don't need English track in it um, then you are saying replace however what if there was some music in it and you want to hear the original English text but um, hear French at the same time well in that case you can say mix with original track and probably reduce the volume of original track by 30 percent uh, or more it's up to you how much you want it here um, so with um, effects with uh, music something like that especially it's good for movies you will need to mix the track in our case we don't need to mix it we just replace the original track um, with English otherwise it would be just added a second track since we specified that we want to process only first two minutes it will be quite shared uh, operation so let's try it first it asks me whether I want to proceed and that's a good question especially if uh, you didn't finish yet and it involves some paid API so after you review everything just say yes and here is the first chunk it's a sound work rephrase if you are working with text to speech and sound works then probably you know this dialogue it's uh, not new but it's reworked in version 116 so what can it do for you the most important is rewriting you can rewrite you can um, in this case as you can see it's very technical uh, video or technical enough technicalish um, so we could either simplify it or even simplify for non-technical users I don't know how it will uh, how it would look like um, so the AI engine here is either Soundworks which is GPT which is taking uh, money from your account in Soundworks and if you don't have it then just say either GPT-4 or Claude um, these options should be enabled only if you have the API key saved another option here is to use cheap and quick version of it as you probably know both ChatGPT and Cloud have cheap version so in this case ChatGPT4 means ChatGPT40 version uh, if it's uh, if you just select that and Cloud I think it's Cloud 3.5 Sunnet and obviously that's at the moment of uh, recording this video um, but if you will say I want it cheap and dirty then it will be GPT-40 Mini and Cloud. I don't remember either Instant or Haiku I guess it's Haiku that's their uh, quickest and cheapest model I would say there is no big difference when we are rewriting so you will just spend less and if you want all these flags to stay the same next time just click save these settings as default um, so I wonder how this text will look like if we simplify it for non-technical people using cheap cloud um, if you click process it will simply process that text put it into this window but it will not proceed with it so let's do it here it is 
Mm. I like it. I like it. I would keep it this way instead of the original one. Um, now, what this option means, since we are here in this um, in this form, um, you can rewrite it. And in normal rephrasing, there is also translation elements here. But when we are rephrasing during the voiceover, the translation is uh, omitted simply because translation is part of the voiceover, right? So here we can either do nothing or rewrite. If, you, if we do nothing and press process or just press close and the result is empty, then your original text will be used. Uh, but if we have something in result, then this text will be used for voiceover, right? So, in our writing, we have multiple uh, styles. Dynamic, well, as you can see in the tooltip, it will be less monotonous. So, for example, uh, me, as I hear myself, I'm rather monotonous, especially um, when it's done without the script. Uh, you can fall asleep very quickly, and I guess you're already sleeping, so I will try to speak not as loud to not wake you up and if you will click here it will be more dynamic some way maybe maybe people will be more interested in what you're saying add humor mm, that's quite thin eyes because gpt jokes uh, is very is very special kind of humor that probably you would like to avoid but you can add it here uh, the simplify and simplification for non-technical people, that's what you have seen here, uh, will not use technical terms and will try to um, explain it to people who, are, who don't really care about it. And I think that's a good feature, uh, especially if you are creating, um, let's say, a video demonstration video of your application or some technical features for your C-level uh, managers who are managers, but they are not techies, um, or for end users um, who are just working with the text. Uh, they, they, they don't really care about your um, yeah, programming uh, achievements. Shorten if possible. So, for example, when I will be making um, dubbed video of this video, I will probably use shorten if possible because I'm talking too much. There are more words than you need. It, it can be compressed. Creative, well, you will see what it is. Um, that thing will make your hello world sound like, uh, well, let me show you. Uh, this is what it will do. Um, if you will say, write hello world, just these two words um, in more creative and elongate, uh, well, which means, which is the opposite to shorten, then it will do something like that. Um, maybe in some cases you might need it, who knows. Natural, well, um, if you want your text, especially uh, translated text to sound more natural to native speakers, then uh, uh, this is the feature for you. Clearer is when you are uh, trying to explain something without the script and probably you are the only one who understands it. So clarity um, uh, when it's needed, um, when you feel that it's needed, just add this feature. Uh, at this option and probably it will work fine. So in this case, once I'm happy with uh, this text, I'm just uh, pressing close. And as you can see here, um, it was generating voice and then generating silence for chunk one of three. It means that there are three fragments um, and uh, uh, sometimes it needs to generate silence. 
um, because every voice has different speed and if what we generated and uh, uh, you have seen that we rewritten the text and it was shorter and probably uh, it was narrated uh, quicker so instead of one minute it let's say took 50 seconds then we need 10 seconds of silence so that next next fragment that would start in original video at one minute would start at one minute not at 50 seconds so sometimes in the end videos we will have moments when uh, the screen is showing something uh, that uh, narration either already covered or didn't cover yet but these moments will be quite short basically a few seconds so uh, if we would just um, transform the whole text of our video into sound and create that uh, one mp3 file or numbers of mp3 files then we would have a lot of work in video editor but in this case it's possible now this is the second chunk I don't want to rewrite it I just say close is a generated voice it was very quick uh, in this case we are using Silvero so as you can see it's local, it works on your machine, and it's super quick. Um, well, probably the, the end result is not something that you want to show to your customers, but sometimes they have quite good voices. Now, the last chunk, it's the shortest one. Let's press close. Uh, and now it will try to create the, uh, first of all, audio file. And in this case, we will say, we will name it closer to original file, hopefully. Something like this. It's quite a weird name, but it just shows us that it was saved and it gives you the uh, name for it uh, in case you forgot. In this Windows, uh, in this messages, if you press Ctrl C, the message will be copied to your keyboard so you can paste it somewhere so you wouldn't um, lose your file. We press OK. And it allows us to um, save our new video as a new video file. So let's say Intel to and it says video created successfully. Mm, let's see how successful it was. Intel Plus are currently facing stability issues in certain situations. We don't have enough information to recommend them at this time. We need either Intel to provide clear explanations and support, or independent experts to figure out what's causing the problems, which models are affected, and how to fix them. This is a complicated matter that we've been investigating for months. We've received many reports from users and have been working with tech experts to understand the situation better. Until we have more concrete information, we can't confidently recommend Intel Plus to our readers. It's been everything from solar storms to the sort of usual suspect of frequency, voltage, memory capabilities, and then one interesting one, which is a possible fabrication level defect causing oxidation of the virus. And this would be through some level of contamination during that process. As you have seen, I've added the uh, original subtitles from original video into this video. And from subtitles, you can see that uh, what the voice is saying is coming at the right time uh, like these subtitles were created for new video uh, which is quite good and as you can see the length of this uh, video is 1 minute 53 seconds so it's not 2 minutes as we requested simply because probably some sentence would be uh, cut um, during this uh, 7 seconds so it just sees when the idea was expressed and then uh, then it finishes the video so it's 
when you're saying first two minutes, it's more or less two minutes. Uh, so let's uh, let's continue. Uh, let's let's watch till the end and see what it looks like. Uh, you may notice that between sentences there is that strange noise, uh, but that's uh, that's how engine works. That's how Celera uh, behaves, and uh, it dependent on the voice really. Uh, if you would select other Celera voice or maybe uh, AWS voice, uh, that would be different. So if this were the case, it would be due to issues with deposition of tantalum nitride during the atomic layer deposition stages of gate formation for the CPUS. This could cause higher... And you can see that text might be different because we rephrased the first chunk. ...resistance and vulnerability to electromigration, which would lead to things like degradation, instability, and would explain a lot. Just to emphasize, it is a tip currently. It's one that is credible, that we have documentation for, and that we are working on investigating, but it's still a tip. It's not confirmed. Less damning information leads from people in the audience who are within the industry at large rooms and elsewhere include things like memory instability above DER, which is really bad, and things like reducing the alcohol multiplier, of course. Uh, in this case, uh, she, should, uh, she couldn't pronounce uh, DDR5 for thousand, but it's only for Celera voices. Um, they had a um, problem with pronunciation. Mm, pronunciation of uh, commercial voices, such as AWS, and the ones that will be uh, implemented a little bit later, such as uh, Eleven Labs. That's a completely different story. Uh, they should pronounce everything more or less correctly. To never exceed things in the range of X to X, depending on which I am we're talking to. And that's it. So as you can see, uh, English to English worked perfectly. Now let's try, just for the fun of it, uh, translate it to, let's say, French. And we, when we selected French, our voices cleared. Why? Because we only selected Celera, which doesn't support French, and we didn't select AWS. So now I'm selecting AWS. AWS should have French. Okay, we, we encountered a small uh, issue when uh, uh, just selecting AWS didn't update the voice uh, list. Chances are it will be fixed uh, in the version that you will get. But anyway, just select target again and you will have it. So um, there are one, two, three, four, eight languages. Uh, sorry, voices. Bonjour, comment ça va? <laughs> Bonjour, comment ça va? Bonjour, comment ça va? Bonjour, comment ça va? It's okay. Bonjour, comment ça va? Bonjour, comment ça va? Okay, Liam it is. So let's translate from English to French with DeepL, with this voice. Uh, we will review everything again. Uh, we will do absolutely the same. First two minutes for that same video. Let's go. So this is the source. I'm not going to rewrite it. I'm leaving it as is. I don't need to process it, I just close it. Uh, if I will process it, uh, it will just copy this into this, so it will do nothing, because I didn't select or write. And now it's French, the French translation. Uh, I can obviously rewrite it uh, if needed, but uh, I see no reason, especially for this demo. I'll just press close. English again, French again, the last English, and the last French. As you can see, translation is quite good. Uh, it includes all the technical terms and all the stuff. 
Uh, so let's see how it will sound in the video. So let's call it Intel FR. Yes, we saved it like that. And I'll say Intel 2 FR. Created successfully. So it was in real time. As you can see, it only took a few seconds. Okay, let's take a look. Nous ne pouvons pas recommander les processeurs Intel pour l'instant, tant qu'il n'y aura pas un certain niveau de transparence de la part de la première partie et une assurance de soutien de la part d'Intel elle-même, ou tant que nous ou une autre tierce partie ne serons pas en mesure de vérifier pourquoi ces processeurs ne sont pas stables dans certaines situations, quels processeurs peuvent être affectés, quelles sont ces conditions, et comment vous pouvez résoudre le problème. Il s'agit d'un problème très complexe à l'heure actuelle. Nous avons reçu un certain nombre d'informations pour cet article depuis nous avons travaillé avec Wendell, de Level One. I'm not going to torture you with the full video, but actually let's go to the end of it, just to see that there is something. Les informations moins accablantes fournies par des personnes de l'auditoire qui travaillent dans l'industrie chez les grands hommes et ailleurs comprennent des choses comme l'instabilité de la mémoire. This video is 1 minute 54 seconds, so it's pretty close to what we had before. It was uh, 153. Um, so it's pretty good, I think. Um, well, let's assume that it works. Uh, the last option in this window is save these options as default. So it will try to um, remember what are your usual options, all the checkboxes, etc. If you want to delete these defaults, this is the link here. For this demo, we are not going to test the mix with original track and changing to other languages. So I hope you understand what this feature means. Um, share in our Telegram chat if uh, it was useful to you, if uh, you found some uh, additional ways to exploit this feature, and especially if you want to add something to it, because we have our own list of things to add to it, mainly new providers, new ways to uh, amend your media, etc., uh, etc., et but likely the real world um, has more interesting challenges. So that was about it. Thank you for watching and have a very good day.